Today we're going to talk about how to have an off-grid water system that is pressurized. So let's go ahead and take a look at the, the pump house. The pump house is pretty much a little storage shed that we have for tools and stuff. This is our cistern right here and this is what holds the water for our house. We pump in from a well and the well goes right to the cistern. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So you look down there, right here, this pipe that goes off from this. This pipe here is the uh, outlet for the cistern. There is a uh, hole right here that is the inlet from the cistern that goes in. Uh, so it puts water in. This pipe here has a foot valve on it. And a foot valve is what keeps the water from draining out of the pipe when the pump's not working. Once the pump puts in water into the pipe, the foot valve shuts and will only open when there is pressure pulling uh, water in. So you want to have a foot valve on whatever pipe you put into your cistern. And you probably want a foot valve of some sort uh, with your well pump. If you have a pipe that goes down into your well like that. The cistern is 1500 gallons. And this pipe here, I'm going to show you where it goes. It's going to go right up to the pump. Let me show you. Okay, now that you've seen the cistern, the only reason that I have a cistern compared to most people's uh, water systems is because I have what is called a low producing well. My well can only produce about a gallon per minute. It's way too slow for a household. So what I need to do is store my water and then take it. And so what the well pump does is it kicks on through a float switch that is inside the cistern tank. And that flow switch, once it goes down to a certain level, will kick the well pump on and then the well pump will continue to pump water into it until it is full and then the float switch raises up and it hits to an off position. Some people have a wonderful producing well and they don't need to worry about that. And they could take their well water straight in and they're using a well pump versus a cistern pump. So the cistern pump for me is what I have to use. So let's go ahead and show you guys that. The reason that I have it buried in the ground you, know, you can take a look here. I mean, this thing takes a real drop off in the ground. It's because in northern Idaho, the frost line can go up to two feet in the winter. That means that the ground can freeze two feet deep. Anything in the ground, such as water, would freeze in that, that ground. And so, as you guys see, the, the pressure tank is there. That's the top of it. It's just right at that line. Uh, but remember that the bladder is blocking the water from going up that high the water is actually much lower. Can you hear that sound? That is actually the cistern pump kicking on right now because the pressure tank has dropped below 30 PSI and now the square D tells the pump to turn on. The pump is turning on and is pulling water out of the cistern tank, putting it into the pressure tank. The pressure tank is pushing it into the home. Now this will stay on until it reaches 50 PSI and then it'll turn off. And how does it turn off? Let me just show you real quick. This is what we call a square D. You can almost see the D inside the square there. And that, <clears throat> that square D right there is what tells that pump to turn on and off. So the pump will keep going. It's a 60 PSI pump. It'll keep pumping until the square T reaches 50 PSI in this tank, and then it will shut it off. It's designed to do that, and you don't have to change the settings on it. You just plug, it's basically a plug and play at that point. So just put it in, you don't have to adjust any screws or bolts or anything like that. It's good to go as is. This is that pipe I was showing in the cistern right here. That pipe is pulling in from that foot valve in that black pipe all the way in. It goes to, a filter here, that filter, that filter is an, uns uh, an unscrewable filter. I can basically unscrew this and then drop it and I can take the wire mesh filter out and clean it. Okay, and then this right here is the out of the filter. It goes up to the shark bike fitting and the reason I use that shark bike fitting is because it was so close I couldn't use my regular crimping tool to get it in there. This is a, where I use a crimping tool. This does not need a crimping tool. It just slides in, clicks, and it's good to go. Uh, a lot of people like these, but these are very expensive. But if you're in a tight situation, 
uh, do consider maybe getting one of these. It goes up this pipe here. It goes to a uh, bar fitting here, which I hooked up my flexible pipe. Okay, that goes to this flexible pipe that goes into the quick uh, quick release, quick fitting of the DC Aquatech pump that I have. The, and this has got a bar fitting on the other end. The pump actually has a pressure switch of its own. I cut that so that it will not interfere with the square D. Because if it was on, it would be fighting the square D. It would be really messy electrically, telling it to come on and off at different times. We don't want that. So I take the wires here, and instead of wiring the, the pressure switch in it, I take the wire off, and I have another video I can show that. And I wired this onto a plug. So let me just show you real quick. I just put a plug fitting on here because I got tired of cutting butt connectors that I had done. And so this is so much easier and I can reuse this plug and that will always stay that way. And this goes to the square D, which also has an on off switch and it tells the pump to turn on and off based on the pressure. So that's why I did that. It makes it so much easier. And then that, that wire there goes down the electro connection to the square D and is hooked up as the square D is designed to do. And then this is the uh, power, main power to uh, the pump that goes to the square D and the square D tells it when to turn on and off. Water pumps out of the uh, pump here and it goes down this to this area here. And this little connector right here, okay, is actually a check valve. And the check valve is really important to have in your system because you do not want the pressure tank to push on the pump itself. The check valve closes when the pump is off. And once the pump is called to push uh, to turn on, it will push this, this open because it will overpressurize the system. It will push it open and then go. It will not start on a pressure here. Uh, I put a shutoff valve here so I could disconnect this system without having the pressure back feed to it. So that's why I did that. And then it goes to a T-pipe right here, and that T-pipe goes into the pressure tank, okay? And it just comes out, it's just sharing the same pipe. There's only one connector in there. And so when it pressurizes, it pressurizes the whole thing to the square D, and the square D is even hooked into the system. You can see uh, the brass nipple fitting there for the square D, and the square D tells what pressure it's at, and then turns it on and off. This here is a pressure valve indicator. It, it will tell me how much pressure is in the system and where we're at. And then this will drop slowly as it's being used. It'll drop down to 30 and it'll kick on. This is what's kicking on. This is just allows me to see a visual readout of it. Without that, I wouldn't know where the pressure was. So this helps me to determine if the square D is functioning properly. And you really should plumb that into the system. And it has a little brass nipple fitting down here as well. Then it goes out into another shutoff, and that shutoff can shut off the whole system from the main. And if you look here, I put a uh, valve there so I can drain the system if I have to, uh, to change out the pressure tank that's here. And then you're seeing the pipe go away from here. That's just teed out. That's shut off permanently until I really need it, which I hope I never have to. And then this goes down into the house. So that is pretty much the pressurized water system and how I hooked it up. Now let me just talk to you a little bit about um, the pressure tank itself. It is a smaller pressure tank, but it works really well for the six faucets I actually have in my home. Uh, you can see here this moisture. Okay, or should I say condensation that is occurring. This is where the water level, you can tell that the water level is up to here and that the bladder is on this area here because there's air in here. There's no moisture, no moisture in this part of, of the tank at all. This is where the water is and the water is causing this condensation because the water is much colder coming out than this tank is. Now, as winter goes and this room gets a little bit cooler in this, in this area, you'll see probably less condensation occurring. Um, I'm also going to insulate the lid. So put some insulation on the lid here to also help out with keeping this nice and warm. The pump itself will kind of be kind of like a heater in this situation because the, the pump does warm up when electricity is applied to it when it's working. So when it, it works, it actually will warm up this little room uh, in here a little bit. Kind of like having a light bulb on to keep it warm enough. Now, um, this, the, 
the pressure tank, you need to have, this is the air valve in it, and it looks just like a tire valve. Same, same principle, a, a tire valve right there. You can actually add air or take air out of it, and you want this to be at your cut-in pressure, which would be 30 PSI in this case, and right at that number. And you can add air to it or take air out to make sure that your pressure tank is at the right PSI, which would be your cut-in pressure, which is 30 PSI. You will need a bigger pressure tank if you have more faucets than six, and that's something to you know think about as well on, on planning your off-grid system. So that's kind of how the off-grid system works. This is DC. I'll show you how that's hooked up electrically in a second. I'll just take you in there and just show you the filter and the DC mechanism. This comes directly in from the, uh, the box that's in the pump house, from the cistern pump and the pressure tank. I have a shutoff valve here, uh, which I used to use uh, more regularly when I had the pressure tank inside the house. I am so glad that I made this move. I put a flexible pipe here. Uh, I didn't need to do that. I probably could have had just a regular, um, you know, three quarter inch PEX, but uh, I had for for reasons I had this actually hooked up differently to uh, to the pressure tank in here. So I just kept everything that was in here and reworked the system. So taking a look back, the water comes in this line here. It travels up and it goes to the first filter. Now the first filter has. A mesh that takes out the sediment that's what I'm looking at right here so this is a, a sediment filter and it takes out like the sand um, and dirt that might come in from the well pump that goes into the cistern in case the pump picks that up and then it travels to a secondary filter and this filter is to clean up the water and make sure that there is um, uh, nothing harmful in there to drink kind of just kind of purifies this is more of the purification it purifies the water if you go here you have an out and you gotta follow your directions in with the water, out with the water, and it goes through here. And then I have this faucet here, which I try not to use, but I use this also to bleed the air out of the system. I can also use this for emergency, for water, so forth, to test the system if something goes wrong. And then this here is a, another shut off, so I can shut off the system. I can shut it off down there to change my filters. You also have a shut off here on your filter. These are plastic and these can break real easy. These are not plastic and they're ball check valves, which won't break at all. So this is so much easier to use these uh, versus these things here. And then it goes off into the house. Now, I was talking in another video where I pulled off two lines. The lines are pulled off inside here and they don't go through the filter system. So my hose bib comes off somewhere in here off of the, off of the main that's coming in before it goes through the system. So there's another set of lines coming off here. It's all pressurized the same because the pressure tank is at the front of all this and it pressurizes everything forward. And that's why you want to do that. Okay, so let's talk a about electrical a little bit. I'm not going to go into like showing how it's wired, but this is a DC breaker and I'm looking at my MagnaSign Magnum uh, inverter. This is the inverter part here. Uh, this is my readout display telling me where I'm at for power and so forth. And if you look down here, these are my breakers and so forth. But these are DC breakers. This is my freezer right here. And this is my DC um, cistern pump. And I can turn it off here or turn it back on. So that's where the electrical goes to that. And then this goes to the square D and the square D then goes to the pump to tell it to go on and off. So that's the basics of the DC electrical. You can, I can actually have several more breakers in the system. This is built and designed for this uh, to actually have DC powered system that go right off of your battery bank. And my battery bank is here and my cat for some reason likes to eat here and I've been using it in storage. This is a terrible idea by the way because every um, month or so, about every other month I like to go in here and do the water check and and fill it with water and that's what those distilled water jugs are for is to put into the battery bank but when you're short on space you just kind of make do with what you got so that's the the whole off-grid water system for the house and as you can see I have a laundry machine and it is you know quite nice got this from Sears 
uh, before Sears closed in town, which there's another video you can see about that. That's so sad. That's my, my Kenmore, and this is a very low, um, low energy consuming device. I'm just kind of show you, if you're ever looking at buying a device, you want to look at the amp usage right, right there. And this is a five amp uh, using device, and most washing machines are 10 amp. That's a lot of power. Uh, so if you want to take a, take a measurement of that, you take uh, 10 amps times 120 volts, which is what the normal plug-in is. So that would be a 1200 watt machine per hour. So if you run it for an hour, you're losing 1,200 watts, okay? One kilowatt of power is being used every time you do laundry. However, with five amps at 120, you're only using 600 watts. So half the consumption, that's amazing. And so you wanna get machines that have the lower amps. And so you always check, check this here and that will help you out. So let me go and turn that off, power it down. I know we're so high tech here. This is an AC machine, so it works through um, the inverter. Just walk you around real quick. I have a sink, I have cold, I have hot water. I have a flushing toilet, so it's not like I need to uh, compost my poo. Uh, I've done that before and we hate it. So here is, yes, it flushes, a flush toilet in an off-grid home. It is possible. And unlike a composting toilet, it takes no electricity except for running the pump. We have a nice shower, okay. It's a clawfoot tub. We wanted a clawfoot tub. We looked for one, purposely bought the clawfoot tub, and then we got the entire hardware uh, to run the shower, and we just we just love it because we love the old old style stuff. So we got hot water, hot shower. Can you believe that? And we're off grid. So you're like, oh, you know, how in the world does an off grid house have hot water? That's you must be hauling water in from, from buckets from the wood stove. No, what we have here is a propane instant on off hot water heater. And we like to set our water at 51 degrees Celsius. And for those of you that have no idea, cause you're American, like me, you put like one of these temperature conversion things next to it. So at 51, we're about 122 degrees Fahrenheit, a little bit more than that. So 55 degrees Celsius would be 131 degrees and 120 degree shower is great because most electric water heaters or water tanks are geared for 120 degrees. So perfect, or even a little bit hotter than that. Here's our kitchen sink. We got the old school, you know, kitchen sink with the, um, it's all metal and it's been, you know, uh, porcelain, you know, has porcelain uh, coating to it. And we love this sink. This sink is cool because it's got a drain board here and it just drains the water into the sink. And it's got another drain board over here. So the water just drains into the sink. And so my wife loves this sink because you can do dishes in the sink because you can't have a dishwasher machine. I mean, I could probably hook one in, but it'd just take too much power. So we just hand wash everything and being a family of three, it's real easy. And uh, when we have company over, we just tag team it, put a couple extra people on the dishes and we're done in no time. And it's a great conversation piece while we're doing dishes. We just talk to our company, no big deal. So that's um, our off-grid water system. All right, thanks for joining us on Living a Sustainable Dream.